Yeah. 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 That was yeah. that was pretty that was pretty rough, Owen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's welcome into the PHNX rising post game show. Um we have got Ryan Sakura awkwardly hanging up on the side here. He will hop in in a minute, but the people wanted Emma Clark, so we're gonna start with Emma Clark. Yeah, I'm Owen Evans. Phoenix Rising dropping the game one nil against New Mexico United in what was, I think, a, a competitor for one of the worst Phoenix Rising games, probably that we've I think seeing um, just to go straight off the bat, Danny put it down immediately to a lack of, of quality from the team on the ball. Um, but the numbers don't lie. 0.24, I believe, the XG created. Overall awful. Um, in a game that normally means a little bit more in the regular season. Emma, I'm just going to, I'm going to let you go here and let you see what, let us tell, let you tell everyone what your thoughts are after that game. Man, I I just really thought that this game, like you said, would mean just a little bit more. Like, uh, if you're if you're an avid Rising fan or a New Mexico fan, you know this rivalry is real, and you feel it. You felt it in the in the stands, as small of a crowd that they had, but you do feel it. Um, it is an active rivalry. It has been for a while. So losing to them definitely does suck. Um, I personally think like in the first, we definitely take should have taken more advantages. We had the wind on our side. Um, if you're not in Phoenix, the wind, what would you guesstimate that mile per hour? It was a lot. It was, it, it was, was a lot. lot. It, it was, was a lot. lot. Um, a lot of wind. They had it on their side and they just did not take advantage when they needed to. Um, they did not finish the opportunities that they had. Mm -hmm. Um, got a little chippy at the end it as did. well. Uh, yeah, just a really rough. For I do want to say. This game could have easily been 3-0, 4-0 if it wasn't for Rocco. It could have been. It could have been. Um, Rocco had a really, really good game, I think, out there. Um, in fact, he, we decided, you know what, we'll toss it straight in there. Let's just go with Rocco Rios Novo, of course, as our man of the match. Eight saves, one of which came on a penalty from Greg Hurst. So, overall, yeah, Rocco kept this team in this game. I had one person texting me right around the final whistle, and, you know, this game could have ended. 3-0, um, and quite frankly, yeah, it really could have. Um, Rocco Rios Novo, a huge part of preventing that from being the case. But but overall, just a pretty dismal performance from everyone, I'd say, other than Rocco. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, yeah. Was, uh, it was really rough to watch, and I definitely agree with you. It was one of the poorest performances i have seen from... well, they, they just didn't create anything did they that well, that was the issue here yeah. i mean we'll, we'll get into the numbers fully later but it, it was just dire i mean again you you look at the the first half and four touches in the opposition box at the break at the break when you had the wind with you and a frustrated goalkeeper on the other side i mean it, it... Uh, man it's owen and i were talking about this in the first and it, it, we just could not help but notice how frustrated New Mexico's goalkeeper was. He was livid at his bench. <laughs> he was livid at his bench. And I, I'm not sure if it was his coach telling him to take these goal kicks on the far left side with the wind blowing that way. Um, I, I just personally think Rising should have taken advantage of his frustration. His head was not in the game at all. As cliche as that sounds. Yeah. Um, just a... Uh, Frustrating game. Really frustrating to watch. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Emma, you know what? We said we'd keep you here for the first five minutes. We'll give you one last, any last thoughts that you want to impress upon the people. Um, to everyone that liked the tweet and that did not see my tweet underneath. Emma is going to find you personally. Come to your house 
and commit atrocities that she can't say uh, on air. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> um, but but she is tempted. <laughs> it was really upsetting. But yeah. we're here for the people. We do it for the people. We appreciate do. you guys. Happy that you guys want me. I just don't there think you are. want me. The people, the people want Emma. The people want Emma. I don't, Emma. I don't think they do. <laughs> they do. They do. We saw it by the likes on the tweet. Well, Emma, thank you for joining for the first couple of minutes here. But, you know, as we swap over, let's have a quick look at the numbers from this game as we swap over from Emma to Ryan. And rising, we kind of hinted at it earlier, really not in this game, 0.24 XG compared to 0.2, oh, sorry, 2.23, 4 New Mexico United, despite that rising out of pretty much 59% of the ball in that game. But they only create six shots in the end, one of which is on target. So New Mexico's 14 and nine. And you know, now I'm joined, of course, by Ryan Sakura. And Ryan, looking at those numbers, I don't even, well, where do you begin? It wasn't very good. I mean, we'll start with that. Uh, 0.24 XG is... Not great, right? I think they had... That's putting it lightly. <laughs> I think they had two shots the entire second half, none on target. Before the 95th minute, I want to say, they had zero shots in, in the entire second half. It was, from the first 15 minutes, Rising was the more aggressive side. They had the wind at their back. Emma pointed that out plenty, right? They had opportunities to frustrate Tambacus and to frustrate New Mexico. Mm -hmm. Dan Harris gets the goal. And that completely flipped the momentum against the run of play. And then the next 80 minutes was all about New Mexico's gutsiness and their grit to play it out, but also that they just played better through midfield. When's the last time you watched a New Mexico United game where or New, Mex New Mexico United Phoenix Rising game where the midfield three for New Mexico, that was Micheletto, it was Zico Bailey, it was Nicky Hernandez tonight, looked better than Phoenix Rising's midfield three. Yeah. Like, like flat out, not just better that they wanted it more, but looked better from a technical skill level. Yeah. It was tough to watch at times. And again, I thought there were some bright spots in Phoenix's performance with as bad as it looked at times. But it's just frustrating, especially when it comes against New Mexico. Yeah. And this, this game, I mean, we, we've said it before. It means more in a lot of ways, right, than most of these other um, – USL regular season games. Look, people will argue here things about how well it's not a rivalry. And I know some people, <coughs> Michael Van der Plas, you're not in the chat at the minute, but but you would, right? Talk about, you know, this this you know not being a rivalry. But you can't tell me you're happy going home tonight or that you're as, you know, you're feeling the same as if they'd lost to any other team. No, no, this one hurt. This one hurt. And you could see the urgency. And you could see, I think, that they understood by the end of that game what it meant. Okay, and the way that it boiled over, the frustration and the anger in there. But just, I, I mean, it, this is the kind of thing that you, you look at that game and I think it's just, I, I mean, I almost don't even know where to begin as Emma walks behind us. She's going home. She's tired. She had a long day. She just traveled in from uh, Denver, actually, today. It's but a trip. Just honestly, just. I don't even know where to begin in terms of how do you start to correct some of the things that we've seen today. It was, and interestingly enough, we got fed a stat on the Rising Radio broadcast. The last time Phoenix had sub-1 XG in a home game was the 2-1 loss to New Mexico last year. They got frustrated at home last year, if we remember that one. It was 2-0 down, it was the Portillo penalty, and then there was a late goal. It was, I believe, the Triore giveaway that he mm -hmm. gave it right to um, Armando Moreno, maybe it was, and he finished it off. I forget who scored that goal, but that's the last time this happened. It can't become a consistency, right? And it begins for me in the midfield. That battery was the best part about this team against Oakland Roots, Hernandez and Rano. It was the worst part about this team in the Monterey Bay loss, which was terrible. It was, I thought, the most uncreative part about the team today. I thought the wide spaces looked okay. Rito didn't get a lot of threat. I thought Azucar was threatening. Gallardo was threatening. Armanakis in his first 60 minutes that he played was threatening. The midfield provided very little. That double pivot for the third time in four games just didn't have a lot of creativity to it. That was really frustrating. To right, I'm going to pull some stats there because you mentioned about Panos Armanakis being threatening. I'll, I'll say this. You look at what the uh, opt the counters chances created. I think he had three or four. He had four. The rest of the team combined had one. It came from Renzo Zambrano and Panos Armanakis is substituted in the 60th minute. I mean, I understand there's a need for changes yeah. there. Things weren't working, but 
I still just don't think they created enough anyway. And maybe that was not the right call at the time. I think understanding the Armanaka sub in context made sense. You were looking for something new across your front three. You're fit. Quasho was a good substitution, I felt, in the moment. The only one of the substitutes that gave you a whole lot was Julio. Yeah. And it was really wonderful to see him. Given that we haven't seen a minute of him previously. But even Julio, he came on in the 60th, mm -hmm. gave... Five ten really bright, creative minutes. He played a couple of really incisive, you know, line splitting passes. And then the last twenty minutes, he disappeared. Yeah, and he didn't play that well. It was. It, it seems like there was a lot of you know, missed opportunity tonight. Not necessarily of like, hey, they missed chances, but just from the perspective of they literally missed an opportunity against a New Mexico team, guys. That let's not forget, lost four nothing to yeah. Charleston last week and has had to travel. And I believe they said this on the TV broadcast. I hope they would have 15,000 odd miles through the first month of the season. Yeah. They've been home, gone, home, gone, home. They, they have moved they've everywhere on the East Eastern Coast Seaboard. Games. They've, they've been every, and they've got to travel again in a couple of weeks. Yeah. They're tired. They should have remained tired and rising looked the more flat of the two teams. I, I was told Danny Stone brought up conditioning in the post game. Four match days in, this is a professional team, and I'm not—I'm sure I'm taking the conditioning out of context yeah. as I wasn't there. But mm -hmm. conditioning shouldn't be brought up four match I mean, days the, the in. Main, in my the main thrust Fitness, of the, the main thrust, I think, of the of the post game overall was the fact that this was today was a lack of quality on the ball from Rising. That the chance creation came from just a, a failure to to really, you know, just a, mistakes that were being made, poor sloppy play that he knows this team is better than yep. um and he, he really deflected it onto that in particular rather than you know what some people like to talk about in this one and we'll talk about it as well i'm sure later on which is the desire and fight especially in games against rivals can can mean that that bit different the better difference and of course i mean that was often very much cited in the playoff run right the team's mentality and all of that and how they managed to fight through games and i Look, it, they it fought through the end of the the last they five six the minutes. Yeah. And I, I, but at that point, you're getting towards is it too little, too late? One thing I noted, we noted post game on our show was Putmar Boy was, you know, he looked like he was in tears. He looked mm. fairly disappointed. And he was, I thought, the best player on the pitch tonight from a defensive perspective. He, he continues Still going to be, with Rocco as man of the match. Yeah, I, I think Rocco makes the right moments and does the right things to keep them in it. Marboy was, I thought, the best player yeah. wearing a black shirt tonight. Wearing yeah. a black shirt tonight. Yeah. Rio Snovo's penalty save was fantastic. Marlon's pointing out in the chat that they were just way too slow. And 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 then, you know, the attacks doesn't look threatening. They're way too slow, again, because I think that midfield double pivot is, and we've I, you've chatted about this a lot on some of the older shows, Fairly one-dimensional. They're stagnant. That they don't one, advance the ball. That typically. one dimension can sometimes win you a game, as mm -hmm. it did against Oakland, because it worked to a T. But when you have just one dimension, you're not going to win more games than you lose. But and even, that's the biggest. But point. even then, when you compare, say, we take that Oakland game, I feel as though Jose Hernandez did more in terms of advancing the yes. ball at times and pl playing the ball forward than he does typically. And even Renzo right? did as well. Even Renzo did as well, right? But your problem is when you get used to the fact that they're not going to play the ball forward and they go into a game and they don't typically play it's the ball forward, sit in a mid block and you don't have that. to worry about the fact that they go. you're not immediately looking for them to spray it. It's giving you time. It's slowing the game down too much. It, hey, look, we could talk about this for a long time. We're going to take a quick break before we do so. And, you know, let, let's... In the in the spirit of the game that was Admin today, Owen. let's let's talk about it this way. Today was a pretty dismal result, but it could be worse. Okay, you get to live here in Arizona. You could have to go home to New Mexico. I've never been to Albuquerque, so I won't comment. I know you're the Albuquerque it's pretty expert miserable. in the room. It's pretty miserable. But hey, you know, you can enjoy the fact that you're from Arizona. It's so Arizona Lottery. They're introducing a new ticket and promotion called Arizona Adventure. There are three ways that you can win and play. Play Arizona Adventure Lottery tickets, including three iconic landscapes. You've got Picacho Peak, Monument Valley, and Camelback Mountain. These tickets have prizes of up to $50,000. You can also check in at geolocated adventures at 10 different destinations from across the state, all the way from Flagstaff down to Yuma. You can check those out at azadventure.com. They'll give you the directions and check in there at the destination coordinates as listed on the website. And you can enter online. 
for a chance to win one million dollars in cash and Arizona travel prizes. So you gotta be twenty one to play that, right? You've got to be. You've got to be of age to play the Arizona Lottery, of course. Give but, me like a month. Yeah, <laughs> he's getting there. He's getting there. Arizona Lottery is not just about playing games and winning prizes. It is also about giving back to the state and its communities. Go visit azadventure.com for more information on how you can take an adventure for a chance to win one million dollars in cash and Arizona travel prizes. And you know, it felt as though that that team at times, I don't know, they they needed a bit of just a. No, this is a really awkward transition. I'm just going to pack that one in anyway, and we're going to go with it. Circle K now, okay? Circle K. You know, if you're going to fill so up the bad. tank, you know, if you're having to drive back to a dismal place like Albuquerque, where are you going to fill up that tank? Real. Circle K. Circle K, if you are driving back over there. And why are you going to do that? Because you save 25 cents per gallon on your first five fill-ups if you sign up for the new Inner Circle program. You also get all kinds of better savings down the line as well, including savings on gas after those first five fill-ups. And you get all other kinds of freebies thrown in there as well as time goes on. Could be snacks, pizza, coffee, the polar pops as well. You know, if your voice is going after a, a, a whole evening of shouting and screaming at, at these New Mexico players that they conduct certain actions with animals. Um, you know, you can join the Inner Circle program for free by downloading the Circle K app today. Terms and conditions, of course, apply and only at participating locations. Go check out CircleK.com for details right then. So, yeah, look, there's a lot of stuff here in terms of we could break down stuff from tonight. And I think some of it is miserable. And we just want to mm. say it was miserable. I think uh, we were one goal in four games. Yeah, that's terrible. We were the last time <laughs> the last time rising um, lost three of four was September 2022. They lost one nil to Colorado Springs, two nil roots at home. 3 0 in San Diego, and then they got a 3 3 draw against Monterey Bay in Northern California. Yeah. That's the last time that happened. Yeah. I don't know off the top of my head the last time Rising scored one goal over a 400 minute stretch. Yep. My guess with the success that this club has had, I've got to look back maybe to the Arizona United days. It was miserable. I think it's the first time they've lost three of their opening four since the Arizona United days. Phoenix, it's not been. A I'll give start. you an insight now. Phoenix Rising has failed to score in three of their four games. No other team in USL Championship has done so more often. But I want to say this: like you don't score goals, and the first thing you pick up is the number nine. And you know, when Eddie was moved yesterday for the undisclosed fee, yeah, a lot of the top comments were on. Hopefully, the money is you know reimbursed into a number nine. I think, and, Tom and Tomas just put it up in the chat a couple seconds ago. I just saw it flash on the screen. They need an enforcer. They need a Carlos Harvey, I think, more than they need a number nine. Someone who's going to drive the play and create more. Because I think Formella can score goals. We saw that in the postseason mm -hmm. run. I think Remy Cabral, anyone who scores 19 goals in a season, uh, uh, next pro, yeah, sure. But I mean, that's a big fact, to be fair, but I still think that you could expect a 10 to 12 out of him in a league. He, like he scored 19 in 20 games. Yeah. Next I, pro or not, that's... Again, 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 level. that would imply that you're probably at least a 10 to 12 yeah, goal striker at this level, at so this level. There are goals in this team. There are goals from the two number nines that are already in the club. I think, and again, we harped on the, the double pivot, the two number sixes, two number eights, whatever you want to call them. They need that Carlos Harvey type, I think, to drive play forward to create more variety to allow Panos Armanakis to maybe be more creative than he already has been. Because right now, he's your chief goal scorer while also being your chief creator. It's difficult to to really yeah. manage to do that. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just take the two Super Chats right now, both from Edward, who's sending $2 twice. Um, I'm going to address the fact that he's talking about a certain rap video that, of course, was tweeted uh, about a year ago, and, and I'm just going to put it out there that no, we are not going to play the rap video thank on you. here. But Edward, thank you for your two super chats. Uh, the rap video, of course, exists and exists in certain places that we are not going to, to play it on here. And of course, we know what Rising fans think about New Mexico and rats. We know what they think. I'm not pointing at anything, Ryan. It's okay. But we know what they think about, about New Mexico and rats. You guys know that. Everyone knows that. That's all we need to know on that one. But no, I, I would agree. And I mean, you look at you look at um, Carlos Harvey. What's he even doing right now? He's playing for the reserve team. Free Carlos Harvey. Oh, man. It's just annoying. I tell you what, I'll say this now. And I'm with I, you, Michael. Free Carlos yeah, free Harvey. Free Carlos. Free Carlos. Um, 
what I'll say is this. We obviously saw Kevin Lambert go to another USL Championship team on loan. And I think he I, would have been I, a center back in this system. Yeah, to no, be fair. I know, I know. And I'm not saying that about him, right? That's a different thing. Mm -hmm. Carlos Harvey, if he goes on loan to another USL Championship team that is not Phoenix Rising, that is a major failing of this club. And I don't know that he's going to. But if he's not getting playing time, you also can never rule it out. Yeah. I think there is a chance that he that eventually they start shopping around for maybe we loan him out. I, I think if you're Carlos, why wouldn't you? Right? Would you well, rather you play at this level kids? or the next pro level? Exactly. Even if, because and they've got a the recall system. normally in place. So if there was ever a nightmare scenario whereby they have to recall him, it can be done. Would you rather be playing against men or boys? Realistically. Again. And next pro, yeah, it's not always the youngest of leagues, but there there are a lot younger players than you get at this level. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, I, I think it, it again, even if it's not a Carlos Harvey, I would personally, and I am personally clamoring for that type of player, right? Yeah. It doesn't have to be that specific player, but it could be. And yeah. it, 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 it should be somebody like that, in my opinion. And, you know, hopefully it comes. But if it doesn't, I do see enough positives in this squad to find a way through, mm -hmm. right? I do see enough quality to really actually get there. It just might take a lot more time than you'd really hope. Absolutely. Um, another one from Edward. Uh, another one from Edward. He's real two dollars in, in this one for a super chat. Show feet. No, I mean I'm not gonna tell you either way. <laughs> no, thank you. No. Um, also, shout out to Craig Berhalter, who's uh, definitely, uh, yeah, yeah. He says that he loves how Rising has played this season. <laughs> I can tell, Craig. Yeah. Sounds sounds legit. Sounds legit. Um, <sighs> Craig Berhalter. No. I, I, I feel no. like we're, we're just at this point. This this oh, post game show. Everyone, by the way, chuck your thoughts in that chat, okay? We, we'll just start chatting with the chat in a second because, God, I could. This should this be is miserable. This is the perfect game. time for you to drop a, a Four Peaks ad and just really let it fly off. Oh, right, we, we'll do. Oh, I gotta keep people waiting for that. Come on, we gotta space these things out again. You're talking to Phoenix Rising, you sicko, says Edward. Thank you. <laughs> the team are not showing feet anytime. Either. Um, anytime you're bringing up stats and trends are that are you know worst rising start since pre rising, right? Worst four game stretch in two years. It's Since not the, start. The, the year that was abysmal, that saw a longtime head coach fired or let go at least. And, um, and the vibes were not that great at that point. The vibes either, were right? the vibes were, were in getting, the toilet. You were getting a thousand. The vibes were in the toilet. Fifteen hundred at the games, right? It, it, it's again match day four. They play Tulsa. Tulsa haven't had the best start. It's a road game. It's a Friday. It's a short week. It's a chance to get back on. And then after it's that, it's on an abysmal pitch. That's true. Sometimes that can favor a bad team. Or, a team that's struggling to play through midfield. You never know. Then you play Colorado Springs. So there are winnable games coming up. But this one was winnable, right? This Monterey was very, Bay was winnable. These, these guys, yeah, they, they Birmingham beat Birmingham hadn't been that good to start. They no. lost 5 0 today. They lost 5 0 to Louisville. Yeah. <laughs> Again, nightmare. It, it, it's just, it's, it's unfortunate. And I, I think. I enjoy it at its peak. I really enjoyed the first 45 against Birmingham in some of the aggressive press and some of the play and some of the, the, the verve that they played with. I enjoyed a lot of the Oakland game. Right. The Oakland game felt as though it was a couple of pieces away from a really dominant. Like they dominated the game. They were a couple of little tweaks away from putting up three or four goals potentially in a game like that. You see a team at its peak that, can be even better than the team that existed in the playoff run last year. Like genuinely, that is what you see if you add maybe one or two more pieces. But you're seeing it, again, 400 odd minutes. You've seen it for 65, 70. You've not seen it for anywhere near a full game. And that's got to be the most frustrating thing for that coaching staff in the front office at Phoenix is mm -hmm. you know it exists, but you can't find a way to fully get it every single step. And that's what good teams, that's what solid teams do is they give you their best almost every minute and rising right now haven't been able to do that no no they just haven't they just haven't i mean again it's if you got david beckham in the chat now we're having one of those days where all the good fun people come out because the <laughs> game was not fun i haven't seen victoria either no david. we haven't seen victoria the no. wind we were just up like top. we haven't seen a goal in three of rising's four games so far this season didn't see it's one tonight a, didn't see again, one how do you have 
30 mile per hour winds at your back for 45 minutes. And I understand that I get four touches in the opposition ball. I understand that sometimes that can be a deterrent to a final ball because the ball will just skip through because the wind is carrying it. How do you get four touches in the final box with 30 mile in the final 18 with 30 mile? One time back is he's completely out of his mind because his bench have been shouting at him to do something <laughs> that, that so he funny. can't physically do. I think at one point on the, on the on the broadcast, when he finally got one in play, we kind of yelled in joy because we were looking for something to talk about because it was so frustrating. Just really, really difficult first half to watch post the Dan Harris goal. And... I well, watched that goal the as well. we, haven't actually, we haven't actually gotten onto that goal, but that goal, I mean, look, from, from the video that I was able to watch, unfortunately, wasn't really able to make out which players were where. Um, because yeah, we love how pixelated like those videos sometimes come. But, but you've got two people running in at the far post and nobody picking them up whatsoever. And ultimately, that's where the goal comes from. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You know what? I'm at that point. Highlight of the night gonna... was Emma getting on the show. Highlight of the night was Emma getting on the show. We should have given him a match. Mm. Oh, we missed a trick there. Maybe if I snap there. my fingers like three times, reappear and I'll leave. She's gone. No. She, she ain't coming back. No, Emma ain't coming back. She'll it's not going to work. Magically. It's not going to work. Emma okay. is probably doing what I very much wish after a loss like that. I was doing immediately, but we'll have to wait a little bit until I get home to do. And that is I'll be going home to grab some four peaks yeah i know there are some of the bad bitty juicy gold nail in the fridge just waiting for me there uh really good beer i've said it before and i'm gonna keep saying it again possibly honestly out does the wow for me which wow that's a yeah wow you hit it there but um yeah after a game like this i think i'm gonna need some you can of course get them from you can find them in grocery stores they sell them in cans you can also get them of course from the eighth street Pub, which I've enjoyed quite a few pints of the bad video juicy gold nail there as well. So be sure to follow them on social. You can find them at Four Peaks Brew and Four Peaks Pub to keep up with the latest in Arizona's hometown brewery. And of course, you can find all of your favorite beers and events. Visit fourpeaks.com slash locator to do so. And of course, you must be 21 or older to drink Four Peaks and please enjoy responsibly. And you know, if it was open tonight at this time of night, maybe I'd head on over to Valley Tap Room. Because, yeah, I do need a few beers, I think, after watching that performance. But, hey, tomorrow, maybe I'll swing by tomorrow. Maybe I'll swing by tomorrow. I have a couple of afternoon beers. You when know, Easter Sunday, enjoy. Owen? Easter Sunday, you know? Yeah. 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 They've got a new location as well. They're out in Queen Creek now. Not just the original Gale, but location, which we all know and love. They are out in Queen Creek as well. And it's the same Valley Tap Room. 30 rotating beer taps. So plenty of variety there. No matter what you drink, you're going to find it. They've got a great food menu there. Uh, into the bar food and snacks to enjoy. They got wines. They got all kinds of stuff there. Ciders, sours, meads, great stuff there. Always a good time. Again, maybe one of these days we're gonna have to get a good friend Max out there for some trivia. Um, I know he normally takes the credit for it. We've got some interesting Max news coming up later, probably not tonight, but uh in the near future as well that we'd like to break. But oh. you know, always a great time when we go on out to Valley Tap Room. Go ahead, check them out on socials at Valley Tap Room. Again, always a great time. Maybe we'll swing by there. Mm. I think our sc show schedule's a bit weird this week. Maybe we'll be able to do trivia this week. No promises, but keep posted on social media. We'll Owen's just looking for on. positives. Looking for the positives. And uh, Alex Shaddock, uh, we got Lilema Clark is man of the match now, which I didn't see as I was reading the thing, but did <laughs> things. Thumbs down. Thanks for our producer, Shane, for putting that one together. Everyone in the chat. Everyone in the chat. Go find the, the tweet asking for Emma, uh, people to say if Emma wanted to be on the show. Just save the photo, and the next time Emma Clark tweets something out, or yeah, next, next time, Rising tweets something out, next time that just spam any... the chat. Just spam the replies with that photo, because I'm going to do that. <laughs> just spam the replies. This with... is how miserable this game is. We've moved on to this now, eh, Ryan? I mean, it. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You brought um, me. Ex you brought me in, expected to be productive. Uh, it was never going to be productive on the, uh, on this one. You know what I'm going to say here? Kev Lambert scored for San Antonio today. Reese says, "Um, I'm going to shout out as well our uh, like you, super chat in there. Two dollars from Alex Shaddock, uh, who's got some comments there on a certain opposition uh, that Rising played today uh, with a few interesting characters there to make up for uh, the language used." F at hashtag dollar sign ampersand new methico. There we go. Shout out Breaking Bad. There we go. 
We love it. We love it. Anyone else in the chat? Come on, just tell us. Tell us what you're thinking. Tell us how you're feeling <laughs> after that one. So we'll take a quick look at some of the scores. I think just Owen's uh, just milking super chat, trying to get money for the system. The league. Oh yeah, well, all those you know, those two dollars. They're really tipping it over the ledge. Right? You've gotten like four of them. That's eight more bucks than you had twenty minutes ago. That's very true. Loose City absolutely battered Birmingham Legion. We spoke about that one earlier. Five 0 Detroit with a two-one win away to Indy. Charleston two-one over Miami. Tampa Bay Rowdies were losing one 0 at the break to Rhode Island. They came back to win four. One. Guess who scored today for Tampa Bay? Who scored today for Tampa Bay? Arteaga. Manuel Arteaga. And of course, Eddie Manjoma also started in that game. He started for today? them. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. Yeah, he started. Mm. Got a yellow card and subbed off. He's wearing but 23 again. Good wearing for him. 23 again. There we go. There we go. Uh, Las Vegas Lights for the 3-0 win over Oakland Roots. Sac Republic 1-0 over Memphis 901. Orange County 1-0 over FC Tulsa. And that San Antonio game as our good friend, Mr. Stat Lackey mentioned it was an 86th minute winner from none other than Kevin Lambert. He do the flip, Reese. Did you see the he video? Do the flip, do we know? Uh, our lackey is cur currently trying to get an answer. Did he do the flip? The lackey is lacking right now. Yeah, the lackey. He's struggling. He's catching up. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> We're getting him to work now. Put him to work. Put him to work. Right. <sighs> Again, sub one XG. Six shots, one on target, none in the second half. Just it was shots. actually sub a quarter of an XG as well. Terrible. Yeah. Last time it happened, two one lost to New Mexico last year at home. Doesn't happen that often. It happened tonight. It's one of the worst starts in a long, long time. Kevin Lambert did do the flip. Yeah. Um, that makes tonight even worse, honestly. Um, just shout out Elon Musk in the chat as well with I can fix this team, have them work harder and sleep in the locker room. Thank you, Elon Musk. Um, <laughs> the chat is now going after Elon in the chat. OK, we love it. Right. You know what? I'm just going to take the cue from our producer, Shane, who has just said good night, everyone in the chat. Thank Remember, you, if you want to continue this kind of nonsense chat, you can do so in our discord. How do you get into our discord? Well. You become a diehard. You sign up to become a PHNX diehard. You get all kinds of great benefits for doing so. You get access to all of our written content on the website. You get access to our diehards only Discord, which is, of course, a really fun place to, I don't know, maybe talk some nonsense about a certain Mr. Simpson. You know, he wasn't here today. You can always have some tattoo fun with our guy. Nice. He's got a tattoo now. And, of course, you could have watched that live if you were a diehard. Um you can do uh, you get a free t-shirt every year of course you remember that's a pretty decent incentive low key worth it honestly it is it is hey the money that you save as well by getting the fizz and free and there's other discounts as well that come on down the line discounts at events discounts on merch all good stuff some diehard exclusive merch as well that is out there and you can find out more about becoming a diehard go over to gophnx.com to find out a little bit more and to sign up you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it there. I think it's been one of those nights. I want to get out of here. I'd imagine you want to get yeah. out of here. Lackey is looking at us like, quite frankly, this has been the most miserable night of his life, and he's ready to to leave. He's ready to look, never look back as he leaves this place. Yeah. But double you know the, next week, double the underscores, double the uh, amount of goals. Hopefully, uh, rising have on the season. Hopefully, well, that would mean they score one. They have one goal. Yeah, so if they score one, they've doubled their goal tally. Double next week nah. in the one game that they have on the season. So you want in two next I week. might be asking for too much, but I hope not. That'd be awesome. So you want them to score more in one game than they have in four? Yeah, that would actually be... Idea. That'd be nice. <laughs> but of course, the double there is, of course, for double the underscore, uh, which is phnx underscore underscore rising. That's where you find us on Twitter if you want to catch up on what it is that we are doing um and what when may or may not be tweeting at new mexico this past week the radiation um place. yeah i mean there's a lot of good stuff here i mean anyway, i'll shout out the new mexico fans that travel they made a really did a really good job of standing up a couple of times during the game and waving their little flags and making very little noise for a lot of a game that they were winning on the road against the rival cool looking flag i thought they were pretty mediocre to be honest there was a lot of them you know, if the front office didn't that. give him the flags, I don't think they'd have done anything. So it's... There was a lot of them. That's that's about as much credit as I'll say. Yeah, yeah. Right, well, we'll, we'll call it there, right? I'm Owen Evans. Find me on Twitter at OJEvans18. You find Ryan at... Underscore S-Y-K-O-R-A-R-Y-A-N. And then also at 
Emma and Clark. Spam there that photo. Go. Spam the photo. That's all we need to do. <laughs> just go on her most recent tweet. Her We're pin bullying tweet. Emma now? <laughs> just her most Why recent, are we bullying Emma now? Just her pin tweet and just thumbs down. I mean, I've already got tagged in <laughs> yes. something. I, 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 so go to that and we'll and see later. We'll see later. Tag the photo. You can find Stat Lucky Reese at Reese11 underscore. And of course, you can follow our producer, Shane at Shane Deef. Uh, Shane D I E F F. Right. We'll see you on Monday this week because of the short week, because of the game on Friday. Rumor has it that Adman will be in for that one. So make sure to get all of your questions ready for Adman. We haven't had him for a week. We've got to be ready to see what he can bring. Ads. See what he's missed. Ads. Can he bring ads? We'll find out. We'll <laughs> find out so. on Monday. You know what? It's a beautiful game, but it's even more beautiful when you don't lose a game like this to New Mexico, which is pretty miserable. Good night. We all silly like the mayor.